Hi, I'm glad that you could join us on Edify today. Thank you for watching this program and subscribing to this channel. In case you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe already. Here we exalt, exhort and edify. Following the episode on discipline, I got some amazing feedback. One comment read, I used to wonder why our school motto stated, discipline leads to success. And yet we never liked the way discipline was administered. Discipline was more of punishment. Another person commented, we have always had the wrong understanding of the word discipline. When our tough fathers spanked us, they earned the title disciplinarian. Thank you for distinctly helping me to differentiate between discipline and punishment. Well, today I'm certainly not addressing myself to the subject of discipline entirely, but I thought making a connection with the day's subject is, all, is logical. I will marry the subject of discipline with habits. Like discipline, habits are built over a long period of time. Ironically, bad habits are easier acquired than lost, and good habits are harder to acquire, but slumping back on them is easier. One reason for this scenario could be because most people seek after the pleasure now drive. They want to, to gratify the lusts of the body, here and now. The wisest king that ever lived calls it the vanity of self-indulgence. Read Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. King Solomon recounts all the pleasures he ran after and concludes, I said in my heart, come now, I will test you with pleasure. Enjoy yourself. But behold, this also was vanity. Then I considered all that my hands had done and the toil I had expended in doing it. And behold, all was vanity and a striving after wind. To say wait takes discipline. To say not something that looks good, smells good, perhaps tastes good, or makes one feel good, for the moment takes a high level of discipline. Ever wondered why you easily pick up bad habits and you suck at keeping good habits? Here is one of the reasons. Because good habits are hard to keep and sustain. It requires discipline and persistence. The first key to discipline is the awareness of the need for and value of discipline. And especially the willingness and eagerness to make the necessary changes and maintain your discipline. Just like habits cooperate with our fleshly desires, discipline cooperates with nature. Even the smallest discipline can have amazing effects on how you think about yourself. Take for example a person who is always late. The day they keep time for an appointment will greatly boost their confidence in doing it again. Like bad habits which start with one wrong choice, the journey to good habits starts with one right choice, to be disciplined. Failure is not a result of one major event or incident, but rather a long list of accumulated little failings. It comes with failing to think today, failing to act today, failing to read today, to write today, to climb today, to wake up early today, to learn today. Failure to do what you set out to do today. When you look back at your day and realize that you did not follow through what you set out to do today, do you hold yourself accountable for the indiscipline? If you do not, therein lies the danger. Likewise, success does not come in one big break. It comes with discipline. T. 
taking little steps in the right direction, doing what needs to be done, not because you feel like it, not because you are motivated to do it, but because you know it is the right thing to do. You do it because it must be done. I doubt if Nelson Mandela was motivated to spend 27 years in prison. I doubt if back in the day before sport was monetized, great athletes like John Akibwa and all the legendary greats in the different sporting disciplines braved tough training routines because they were motivated. They were simply disciplined. Unlearning any habit certainly takes much longer than the time you take to acquire it. But most people easily slump back on good habits because it takes much more effort to develop and sustain them. If we repeatedly do something, it becomes a habit. We could even say a discipline. Discipline comes except through discipline. So do habits. If we can consistently do things whose value is temporal, how much more when we discover the value of doing that with lasting benefits? Depending on what they are, our habits will either make us or break us. We become what we repeatedly do, according to Sean Covey. Today's edified scriptures for reflection are Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 26, and 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. I'll just read a bit of it. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealous, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride in possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. God bless you.